Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson and today we're going to take a look at creating this pretty cool sky replacement technique, effect, whatever you want to call it here in Photoshop. We're going to learn all kinds of different cool techniques as we create this effect here in Photoshop that I think you'll really like. If you haven't done already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so you never miss any future Photoshop tutorials. Let's jump in and get this thing started right now. All right, here we are in Photoshop, and I've got the image that I'm beginning with, and my sky image, which I wish to replace here. I want to get rid of this kind of blown out sky, a little overexposed. We want to replace it with something a little different, a little more colorful, things like that. One thing I do like, and it all depends on your photo. Every photo is a little bit different. This photo is nice because we have we, we can very easily see direction of light. It's not uh, a very diffused light that's all over the place, although those skies can be easy to change as well. This, because we can see the sun is coming in from over here, we're going to have certain shadows we need to take into consideration. Duration, and they're just going to be some skies that really aren't going to work if, if your shadows are all on the wrong side in the sky and then on the ground they're all on the opposite side thing it's good it's going to look weird it's not going to look very natural um, so you may want to take that into consideration depending on your photo if you can see the sun sunrise sunset type situation and you want to replace that sky try to replace it with a sky that has light coming in uh, about the same direction it's going to just look a lot better so here's how I like to get this started. The first thing I want to do is kind of cover up the sky that's here now. And I'm going to do that by sampling with my eyedropper tool. First, kind of the darker bluish color from the top. And then I'm going to hit the letter X to flip my foreground and background color. And I want to sample a very light color of the sky here off of the horizon. So I'll just pick that color up. So now my foreground and background colors are the colors of the sky. I'm going to grab my gradient tool. And I just have my foreground to background gradient right here in this dialog box. Simple as that. It's just a default foreground to background gradient. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're going to just drag this in here. I'm going to drag up from the horizon. I want to start my gradient there. And I want to finish it at the top. Don't worry about all the extra color, all that nonsense. We're going to cover that up in just a moment. We're going to go layer. We're going to choose layer mask. And choose to hide all. That's going to just temporarily hide everything. Not erase it, just hide it. And this is where obviously every image is going to be different. I have a relatively simple image in terms of my horizon. Sometimes you may have a ton of forest and trees. You're going to want to utilize the select and mask and really get in there and create a complex selection. This isn't a tutorial about select and mask though. So we're just going to create a really quick selection here. And I'll begin with the poly lasso tool. And just quick ring a selection around this whole thing. It doesn't really matter if it's rough. We're going to kind of perfect it here in just a little bit. And now that I have that... I'm making sure that I'm selecting the mask, see the white tick marks around it, and then hit Command or Control I to invert it, and then select, deselect to get rid of our selection. So now the bulk of the sky is showing, covering up our old sky, but we need to get in and mask all this stuff in, and then we have the added issue of all these telephone poles and electrical wires. We need to bring that stuff back. There's a really cool trick I'm going to show you for bringing that back in a second, but real quick, we're going to go through and we're going to mask all of this stuff in by hand. That's the way I'm just choosing to do this image. So I'll just zoom in quite a bit and grab my brush tool. I'm just going to use a standard, a fairly soft edge brush. And, uh, you know, it really helps to have a tablet for doing this. And I'm just going to rip through this really, really quickly and brush all this in. The one thing I'm making sure to do is when I'm over here along the main area of the horizon, I almost want there to be a dusty overlap. Like, I don't want it to just be this sharp edge that suddenly changes. I almost want this fog uh, of the of the sky almost, almost creating th this misty fogginess right there where the horizon meets the original image. And there you can see it looks like we've painted in the sky. I'm not even necessarily concerned at this point about getting an exact match. I just want to get it kind of really, really close. Some of the colors are very similar because of the colors we sampled. But when we paste the sky and we'll be able to refine the mask a little bit more. And I'll show you how we do that exactly. What I want to do for now is help blend the edges a little bit more. Bring back those power lines. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm going to come up here to layer. Layer style. Blending options. And really, the main thing I'm going to watch for over here is just those power lines to come back. I'm going to begin here with the blend if sliders, the underlying layer. I'm going to alt or option click the black slider. It's going to split it, and I'm just going to start dragging that back. You can see here come the power lines back into play for us. Not too bad. Maybe I'll bring the other side over a little bit, see what that looks like. I'm just looking to bring them back kind of as much as I can. See some of the clouds and things are coming back. Don't worry about that. We're really just concerned about bringing those power lines back. We'll take care of everything else in a little bit. There we go. Pretty good. Brought them back. They look really clean. We'll hit OK. Now, obviously, it brought some of the clouds back as well, right? But we're still covering up a lot of the problem areas. We're going to take care of the clouds uh, in a moment. I'll show you how we do that. But what I want to do now is drag the sky into place. And all I need to do is unlock my background layer and then hit Command or Control C to copy it. 
Come over to my new image, Command or Control V to paste it in place. Let's grab the black arrow. We'll move it up into position. Maybe something like that. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll hit Command or Control T to free transform. Maybe I'll right click on it, perspective warp it a little bit, widen the top, pinch the bottom a little bit to add a little more of that. Uh, same perspective that we're looking at it through. And then I'm going to try to kind of match up where the horizon is. I bet the horizon is just a, just at a frame here. So I'm going to nudge this down. We're just a little bit kind of like that. So we kind of have it, you know, kind of have it the way that it would be in any old photo. There we go. And now I'll name this layer sky. All we need to do is hold down alter option and drag the mask from the sky base layer up. And it's going to copy that mask up to our, uh, our photo here, the new sky. Now here's where we're really going to see issues with our mask because the color is so contrasting. Number one, we'll be able to see all these little edges here that need to be cleaned up along the house. That's no problem. We'll do that really quickly. But then here you can see this really needs to be faded much, much more. And all along here, I, it was very difficult to see with the other uh, sky colors over here could be faded in a little bit more as well. This is where that sort of dusty look that I'm talking about really pays dividends. But we got to clean up these edges a little bit more. So I'm going to go over this again really quickly with the brush tool. In this case here, I'm working up on the sky layer layers mask. So make sure you select that mask and we're just going to work on this mask. And again, with the brush tool, you're just painting with white. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to begin just painting over some of these edges, make the brush a little bit smaller, maybe, and paint over these edges really, really quickly. Just clean them up and make sure this whole image blends together beautifully with none of these weird haloing edges and, and problematic areas. And there, as you can see, the key really was using really, really large, well, really large when I'm zoomed in that far, a really large soft edge brush and just really fade it all together nicely to get a nice, what looks like seamless edge. And then I'm going to click on the sky and I want to set this to the blend mode of hard light. So it's going to sort of take on some of the color from the back. It's going to just start mingling. You can see we're bringing through some of the light poles looking pretty decent there. We could also, honestly, I should probably zoom in and edge them out as well. But to save us some time in the tutorial, I'm not going to do that. You would just, you know, quickly paint up and down them using the brush tool, shift click, and then click where you want the brush to go. And it'll draw a nice straight line for you. Uh, but what I want to mainly do is talk about the sort of outline of our old clouds that we can still see behind this. See this weird white blotch up here? That's because of the blend if we did to our sky base layer, right? Because we want those light pole or the, the electric poles to show through. We want to hide these clouds. So the simple way around this is just duplicate the sky base layer, Commander Control J, right click on this new layer and choose to clear layer styles. And then what we're going to do is click on the mask and I'm going to paint with black wherever I want this new solid layer to go away. And that is primarily going to be here where the light poles are. So I'm going to make sure I'm painting with black and I'm just going to paint this stuff away just like so. Maybe I'll make it really big and I'll just make sure it blends together nicely. Something like so, just like that's pretty decent, right? Something like that. And then I'll paint up here to just try to cover some of that up again. A lot of the color is going to be blended as well because the sky is overlaying this. And you can see how much cleaner that looks, right? If I shut off that second sky base layer, see all that junk that was back there that we didn't even really notice. Now we get a nice clean sky. So I'm going to select the sky layer. We want to begin sort of blending some of this stuff together. I'm going to open up my adjustments panel here and we're going to attack on a levels adjustment and hit command option G that's control alt G on the PC. And I'm just going to boost the output black point and the output white point. It's going to kind of reduce some of that contrast up in the sky, help it blend a little bit more. So we're just taking some of the edge off the color. And then I want to blend the color a little bit more. So let's go back to our background layer. Let's infuse a little red and purple that we see in the sky here into the foreground a little bit. We're going to do it with a color balance adjustment. And I'm going to just punch in some manual numbers here. We're going to go 35 to add a good deal of red, negative 25 to add a bunch of magenta, and then negative 10 to add a bunch of yellow there to the foreground. Then I'm going to come down here to my highlights. And in the highlights, I'm going to push about 15 red into my highlights. I'm not going to mess with the green magentas, but here in the blues, I'm going to add about 15 blue to my highlights. Then I'll bump up to my shadows. And here I'm going to say negative 10, push some cyan in there. Negative 10, push some magenta in there. And then we'll just dump a little bit of blue in there as well. I'm going to collapse my panel. We can shut off the color balance adjustment layer. You can see it's only affecting the background layer. Now what we want to do is, and this is kind of an important step depending on your photo. This photo probably doesn't matter quite as much, but I still want to show you the technique. We have this body of water here, and if it's a shiny, glassy-looking lake or a shiny hood of a car, you're going to want to make sure you reflect the new sky into or onto, I should say, that shiny surface. Here's how we do it. We're going to select the sky layer. We're going to duplicate it up. I'm just holding on Alter Option and dragging it upward. I'm going to set it to the normal blend mode just so I can see it. And what I'm going to do is hit Command or Control T, and I'm going to set the transform or anchor point here. I'm going to set it to the bottom center. Then I'm going to right-click within my transform handles and choose Flip Vertical. 
Now we have that exact copy of the sky flipped right over. I'm going to hit check to commit that change. I'm going to nudge it upward a little bit, just like so, just so we're definitely covering the body of water. I'm going to drag the mask for this layer down to the trash can. It's going to ask me, do I want to keep it? No, I'm going to hit delete, get rid of the mask altogether. I'm going to hide the sky layer. And what we'll do is we will enter quick mask mode here, this little icon beneath your foreground background colors. I'll zoom in on my image a little bit. And you don't even really need to be very exact with this. I'm just using my pen or my, my mouse, I'm sorry. And I'm painting with black, but it's in the quick mask mode. You're essentially painting a selection while we'll double click on quick mask. Make sure that color indicates a selected area. That's how I'm using quick mask mode. Hit the letter Q if it creates a selection for you. And just roughly paint over all these areas of water or as, as much of them as you can get. It really absolutely does not have to be perfect. You can see it's just a giant soft edge brush I'm using. I'm not too terribly concerned about, about it being perfect. We're going to make some of those adjustments later. Now, I probably would take a little bit of time and just maybe paint that out a little bit, that little, little peninsula sticking out into the water. Uh, but right here, I'm not going to worry too much about it for the, for the uh, sake of our tutorial. Hit the letter Q. It's going to load a selection of that area with nice feathered edges. Turn on that sky. In fact, I'll call this reflection. And we're going to create a mask by hitting the new mask icon at the bottom of the layer panel. There we go. We've masked our sky into that rough area. It looks really bad. Don't worry. We're going to fix it here. We're going to double click on this layer or we can do what we did before. Go layer, layer style, blend options. And once more, we're going to use the handy dandy blend if sliders. And I'm going to slide the, the white point of this layer backward, but I want to split that point, hold down alter option to split it and then drag that back until you start to see it blend a little bit right? A little bit. We're getting some of that color in the water. And then I'm going to split the black point and I'm going to drag that. And this is what's going to bring the shoreline back, right? Even the areas we painted over. So we're just going to bring some of that back. You can see it still looks rough. It still looks super painterly, but look, we're getting a pretty nice edge over here, right? Not too bad. Maybe I'll bring it back just a little bit, something like that, just kind of until it looks about right. And then I'm going to set it to the blend mode of color. So you can go with color. You could go with overlay. I tend to go with color here. We can see there's before, there's after. See what a little bit of uh, layer style blending options can do for you. And then just reduce the opacity a little bit, maybe 75. Again, it's all going to depend on your photo and hit OK. So there's before the reflection and there's after the reflection. It's a super subtle change, but we're just adding some of the pinks and orange from the sky there onto the surface of the water and blending them in really nicely. All right, so the last two things we're going to do is try to blend the color a little bit and add a sun to the sky. We're going to add the sun to the sky first. If you remember, I'm going to alt or option click the little eyeball here on my layer thumbnail so we can see the before image. We had the sun in the sky here. Theoretically, it's behind the cloud there, and we can still see some of the sunbeams on the grass even in our new, uh, new skied image. So let's mimic the sun. Here's what we're going to do. Create a new layer. Grab your brush tool, and we're just going to paint a big old dot here in the middle. You can paint it a couple times. I'm painting with a big soft edge brush, and I'm going to hit uh, Command or Control U to open hue saturation. And the first thing I'm going to do is boost the brightness to 100% or the lightness, I should say, and hit OK. We've got this nice big white dot. Command or Control T. I'm going to hold down Alter Option, and I'm just going to make it big. Like I'm going to make it kind of as big as I can. There we go. Great. And then I'm going to enter back into hue saturation by hitting command or control U. And here I'm going to tick on colorize for hue. I'm going to set it to, let's go 30, pretty orangey. We're going to crank the saturation up to 100 and we still don't see any change because the lightness is solid white and white doesn't have any color or it's just everything blown way out. We're just going to reduce the brightness or the lightness here to like, I don't know, negative 35 or so, something like that. A nice, really warm orange. I don't want yellow. I really want this to be closer to red than yellow, if anything, particularly for this scene. All right, so now that I have this, I'm going to duplicate it. Command or Control J. And now I'm going to go again, Command or Control U. And I am going to boost the lightness all the way up so it's solid white. And this is going to be the actual sun in the sky. So I'm going to hit Command or Control T. Again, free transforming. Hold down Alter Option. We're going to scale the sun way down. We're going to make it pretty small. All right, so kind of like that. It'll be in the center of our big glow. I'm going to select the glow layer here and set it to the blend mode of screen. So you can see it's really interacting with uh, our image at this point. Then I'm going to select the sun, and I want to do a couple things here. We actually want to go back to layer, layer style blending options with this guy, and we want to check off transparency shapes layer. So shut that off, and then set it to the blend mode, linear dodge add. And we're going to get this really very sun looking glowy shape, and we'll reduce the fill opacity here to, I don't know, 30%. It's all just going to be a matter of what looks good. Let's select both of these layers by shift selecting them and we'll drag them over here into the sky about where they should be, something like that. And the background glow, I'll reduce the opacity of that as well, down about 50%, and it really needs to be blurred a bit more. In fact, the little sun needs to be blurred a little bit more. Let's blur that first. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's go maybe like 65, not 400. Let's try 65. Yeah, 65 actually might be a little heavy. Let's go not 645, but rather regular 45. 
something like that, hit OK. I'll probably boost the fill opacity to maybe about 40, just to give it a little more sting. Maybe Command or Control T, and we'll make it a little smaller in the sky, something kind of like that. I'll go to the glow, and we're going to blur this a lot. So we'll go blur, Gaussian blur, and we might actually go like 350 or something like that. We really want to soften it out, make it a very soft glow, and hit OK. One problem we have with the glow is the glow is just laying on top of all this vegetation when we very clearly have shadows on the backside of all of our tall grasses here. So let's select that glow, and once more go layer, layer style, blending options. We're getting a crash course in the blend if sliders here. And what we're looking to do is bring back some of the darker areas of the underlying layers. So we're going to split the black point or the black slider for underlying layers. And we're just going to pull it back until it kind of looks natural, right? Until it looks blended in and hit OK. Then if I hit Commander Control Z, there's before and there's after. So it makes a really big difference. There's with no glow at all. And there's with our nice added glow. And for the sun, I may actually reduce the fill a little bit more. Make that glow a little bit, you know, it's really cutting through the haze or something up there. So at this point, I might do something like add a simple color lookup table adjustment layer. That's this color lookup table. I just pasted a custom LUT in there. You can see it just boosts some of the colors and, and uh, contrast a little bit. Looks nice. You really don't have to add that if you don't want. I just reduced the opacity to 25% on top of it all. And if you're still looking at the photo and you say, you know what, it's just too rich, it's too contrasty, there's too much of that blue, red, purple, magenta-y looking stuff, um, I'm going to paste in a couple more adjustment layers here. And what I've got going on here is in color balance, I'm just coming in and I'm just pushing and saying, you know what, get some of the red out of the image, introduce more green, right, to combat that magenta, and push a little yellow into it as well, combating or, or pushing back against the blue and kind of leveling things out. Up here in the sky, it looks a little bit too cyan, so I might go to like the highlights here and push a little bit more red pink into them uh, maybe push a little yellow up into there as well something sort of like that I don't know maybe the maybe the yellow is a bit much something like that and then here with the levels all I'm doing is I am simply reducing some of that contrast using the output levels drag the black point up drag the white point over a little bit I'm just gonna reduce some some contrast you can see that just taking a little bit of the bite out of the image and then here I just have a channel mixer uh, adjustment layer set to monochrome which is solid black and white if I put it at 100% you can see there it is totally black and white uh, and then I just set this to whatever 20% opacity it just reduces the saturation a little bit so if you like that you know you could do that if you don't you like the more red high contrast purpley you don't have to add any of those additional adjustment layers but you have a lot of options and most importantly we've taken this from an image with a blown out sky and transformed it into something that has a really nice really smooth uh, just a nice looking sky. So there you have it. We replaced the sky in Photoshop and covered a bajillion little tips and tricks along the way that I think you'll find useful. The cool thing about this technique is you can pretty much use it in any photo. It's very, very universal and very versatile as well. Uh, if you got this far in the tutorial and you replaced the sky on your own, I'd love to see it. Upload it to your Instagram. Tag me in the image. Actually, tag me in the image, not just the caption because the caption stuff sadly goes away so I can't see it. I'd love to be able to see what you do so I can show you some love, give you a like, give you a comment, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, guys, for everything we covered in this tutorial, from the masking to the blend if stuff to contrast and color and masking and edges and more masking and more edges and everything in between, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds in Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.